This is Oral Stories. Welcome to Fast Track to 40. Like anything real, Fast Track to 40 has adult themes presented in adult language. Listener discretion is advised. And a good beverage is encouraged. Fast Track to 40, Episode 1. Take that, you giant bag of green dicks. One more flame bolt. Oh, mental bomb proc, yes! Fuck you, and take that for killing me the last time. I... Oh, shit! Not now, man. Damn it, 5% to go! No, come on! 2%. Oh, please don't be Lenny. Please don't be Lenny. Damn it, where's my phone? Damn it, Lenny. Hey, Lenny! Yeah, you know me. Clickety-clack, this writer never slacks. No, what? Lenny, that's just the TV keeping me company. A little loud, sorry. So, what's the good word? That was a lot of pitching. We got a deal? Something? Uh-huh. Okay? What? But... But they love... Uh-huh. Fine. Yeah, yeah, I know. Thanks, Lenny. Yeah, next time. No sale. Oh, fuck. Come on, Clarity, help me. I can't decide if I feel like charcoal, lemon, kiwi body scrub or if it's the yuzu periwinkle gardenia wash again. Penny, I have never understood why you want to smell like a fruit salad. Because I'm a delicious snack? Truth in advertising. Okay, what's the one you use? Oatmeal almond? It's good for the skin. It makes you smell like grandma's breakfast. Yuzu it is. Are you still trying to decide on a bath sponge? Lufus degrade, the nylon net things never feel like I get a real exfoliation. The brush is nice, but is it too rough? I feel like I can't make any decisions lately. Ugh. Get the exfoliating gloves. I have a pair and they're great. Mm, I feel like I'm molesting myself. Dirty while I'm getting clean. What? What's the look for? <laughs> so, so much wrong with you. You're taking the gloves. You need them. Let's go. Janet's waiting. I really feel this is the moment, Dan. This project could put me on the map with corporate and clinch that regional manager promotion. You're determined, Janet. (laughs) And if I know you, and I do, then it's in the bag. Did you want me to help you with your presentation? I mean, I know we're buying that sofa tomorrow, but I'm here to listen. (sighs) No, I have Penny and Clarity for that. You'd be bored. Oh, okay. I mean, I'd just like to help. Hi, are you ready to order? Can I have a green tea? My friends should be here soon, so we'll order then. (sighs) Fine. Coming right up. Rough lunch shift, I guess. Uh, Oh, no, Dan, not you. It's... never mind. Yeah, I leave in two days, so we should get the sofa tomorrow. JJ! Janet! Gotta go! Hey, Chicky. About time. The waiter was about to chuck me out like yesterday's wasabi. A little shopping stop. Sorry. Was that Dan? We want to say bye to Dan, too. No tea for her. She's already full of caffeine. I am starved. Let's get hand rolls. We've got a lot to cover for Clarity's birthday trip. The big 4-0. Oh, (laughs) the big oh no. Stop. We're all headed there. Mm, mm Mm-mm-mm. Except me. I get you two ladies to lead me into the promised land of that decade. Yes, the baby of our little group. 1.75 years. Oof, close enough. If you weren't my besties, I wouldn't even be at this lunch. This is not going to be like your 30th. You didn't even tell us. Hate. Hate that. It wasn't a good year. No, you did that last year. Oh, well, that wasn't a good year. For your 35th, you locked all social media and turned off your phone. Also, not a good year. For all of the witnesses, what year was a good year? (sighs) We won't be held back by jackasses. We are going to make this birthday a success. Rule number one on my show, Pandemonium, never let an asshole deny you the right to be happy. Exactly. Now, since mine is the month after, we should do a girls' trip. It's early enough in the year that we can plan in advance and get great prices. 
Oh, look at her. She's excited. She's got the planner out, and you can see the little director light going off in her head. Oh, I love this. It's going to be epic. This is why we're friends. I love me when you talk about me. Oh, I love both of you, but we don't have to do this. 40 isn't a big deal. Not a big deal? Liar! It is a milestone. It's when women come into their power, a time when we fully embrace who we are. The Divine Mother aspect looks out over her past as the maiden and... If I agree to this birthday trip, will you stop the Gaia madness? I'm worried you're embracing an ages society and limiting your opportunity to have joy. Oh, it's not age. It's more than that. Not age? You sure? Gotta check that internal indoctrination. (sighs) It's not. Trust me. I'm black. I look amazing for any age. But, um, it's just... Are you ready to order? Oh, yes. Damn. Oh, so close. Two Kamehameha fireball rolls, please. The decision is between Oahu and Cabo. I still say we can do a biza. I want to celebrate 40 rather than die at 40. <sighs> yes, we can save that for 50. Oh, agreed. All bets are off for 50. We can work out all the details next lunch. How about this Saturday after spin? Oh, no, no, no. I have a thing. No spin. What? We have traditions. I have by 40 goals I want to do, and this is one of them. <laughs> you too? That's the only thing I'm really worried about. I'm, I'm turning 40, and there are these goals standing there, screaming at me. Confession time. Same. I am doing great. Dan and I, great. Work is great. I should be happy, but guys, there's a thing. And I want that thing. And I want it by 40. Right. We've got less than a year. Penny, you've got almost a year and a half. Oh, mine could take a while. Come on. Come on and share. There is so much power in sharing your vision out loud. This is all on me. You guys can't help. There's a regional directorship opening up. Regional? That's a big step up. Huge. And I want that. I've missed out on being on the 30 under 30. Now I'm missing out on being part of the 40 under 40. Oh, I've been in the 30 under 30 for my show. You're not missing much besides a headshot and a mediocre award luncheon. I want a little respect, okay? Some peer recognition. I mean, look at me. I'm a chubby... Curvy. Curvy, short. Girl, I wear pink without irony. I like unicorns and rainbows. It takes strength to not put rhinestone clips in my hair for the office. One is okay. Four was a cry for help. I just don't feel respected, and I want people to respect me. So I dress like this. Hmm, like a fed. Precisely. Heels when I want to wear flats, but I can't be short. I want to be regional director. My boss is retiring, and I am going to get that promotion. Even if I... have to give up bread and rice to do it. I am going to be slender, lethal-looking. A total revamp from head to toe. I am going to nail my next sales trip, and they are going to fall before my 39-year-old feet and promote me. Wow. I feel weird. Inspired, even. I felt that energy. A little too capitalist in gold, but was so womanist and powerful. (sighs) Oh my god, Penny. You were right. I feel so much more clear, so confident. Touch my hands, I am literally shaking. Okay, now you, Claire. Oh, this is so weird. Don't be a big baby, spill to us. Think of this as your support circle for that big pre-40 leap. Fine. My last screenplay got some meetings. I did some pitches, but nothing sold. Oh no, maybe I'm sorry. Is everything okay, financially? It's not as good as it would be if that one sold, but I've still got some savings, a few ghost gigs, dialogue polishing. I'm okay. But I want more, too. What does that mean to you? You're a rarity. You earn money by writing. Regularly. Is it the big money? You want the fatter checks? You think I don't want to be sitting on some cool million-dollar script offer, 
and sweet points on the gross deal because I just so happened to write a hit? You know what? No. I mean, it'd be great. But I want something else. Respect. What? We respect you. Damned right. No one in my family has read a word I've written. My mom hates horror. Hates it. No one has seen anything I've done. For once, I want her to see what I've made and like it. How's that going to work? Well, that's the hard part. She likes, uh, Bronte? Ugh, gross. You're going to do a period drama? Oh, that would be impossible. Penny! Positive. If there's a crinoline in her story, then there's a vampire. That's just facts, Janet. Uh, Ignore her. You are a great writer, and you're not limited at all. Janet is right about that. Get it? Okay, keep ignoring me. This is the you I get. Janet gets empowered counselor. I get the worst kid sister. I did need a failing. For real. You can do this. Can I? We've never liked the same things. If I can tap into something she likes, maybe I can write projects that show a range that proves I'm not just genre. I don't know. Okay, got my mic, recorder is on, time to go. What is my goal? Where do I want to end up at 40? Janet and Claire have it easy. Professional goals. For me? I don't know. The show is doing great. Pendemonium. The number one sex therapy podcast. With nowhere to go but up and out if I want it. Right now I'm just building this wave before I crash it all over bigger media. So, not a career. (sighs) The schoolyard. Almost halfway through the trail. I'm getting faster. Back to my big 4-0 question. Love, is that what I'm after? The life partner thing. I mean, this is a great life. It would be amazing to share it. (sighs) Let me sit. Breather time. Breathe in for five, breathe out for five. I own my home. I'm financially comfortable. I resolved a lot of my mom issues. And most importantly, I am so hot. A hot, single, 38-year-old who don't need no man. (laughs) My biggest problem is I'm doing great. Considering how much I fucked around growing up, Penny Eisenstein, you are amazing. What else can you conquer, babe? What's the next step in your fantabulous life? Time to haul ass, girl. Get up and go. Where's that page? There! Using the resources we save from consolidating the redundant IT departments post-merger, we can expect a... uh, What is that? Two million? Or was it 2.3 mil? (sighs) Damn it, Janet! Shoot, shoot, shoot! Hey, Starbug. Doesn't sound like practice is going so hot. Oh, Dan. It's not. Come on, I can't believe that. You're my little shark. Girl most likely to crush corporate under her dainty, powerful heels. <sighs> not crushing anything right now. Except my hopes and dreams. Not even my lucky blazer is working. Uh, you could try your presentation on me and I could give you feedback. <laughs> oh, Dan. No. I need to talk to someone with real business experience. Or my girls. Oh, okay. Didn't know my humble public servant position disqualified me. Just trying to help and getting squashed for it. Damn. Dan, I can't remember all these details. I feel completely disorganized and I leave in two days. I am so stressed. Yeah, I can tell. Janet, look at me. What for? I see you all the time. Stop, you big baby. Look at me. Right in the eyes. Okay, I'm looking. So am I. 
and I am looking at a smart, beautiful tiger shark of a businesswoman. You started impressing me in high school and you've never stopped. I know you're going to ace this and there is not a lie in my eyes. Nope. You believe every word you're saying. <laughs> that creepy little lie detector skill you've got will come in handy. I'm just feeling the nerves. <laughs> you always know what to say. I am a professional Janet Wrangler. <laughs> Hell of a job you fell into. But I have to learn to not drive myself crazy like this. Can't always depend on you to take me out of Panicville. Why would you say that? My plan is to always be here. Dan, you know I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, well, it makes me feel a little weird that you still sound like this is some sort of hookup or something. I don't. I mean, you live with me. <laughs> Janet, I do not live with you. We live together. <sighs> okay, okay. We live together. A house we own together. A very permanent arrangement. Oh, God. Oh, God. A arrangement. Okay, look. I'm going to go take a walk. You got work to do. And th this, this thing we do... You know what? Now is not the time. Okay? Go eat dinner. I made your favorite meatloaf. Dan! Dan! <sighs> Damn. Open mouth, insert huff. I don't know why I do this. He's gonna be pissed for days. We chug along, everything's cool for a really long time, and bam, I just fumble it. Partly his fault. He knows I'm sensitive about relationship permanence. Nothing I can do now but apologize. He's right, though. I have to focus. And I'm hungry. Maybe I can blame it on the hangries? Ooh, I wonder if he made those little twice-baked potatoes I like. Come on, Lappy, let's get some food. No pressure. I'm just doing a writer's group for the first time in years because my talent has abandoned me. I could just go home instead of sharing my shame with Randos. Clarity, give it five more minutes, then we can bail on trying another writing group. Clarity? Holy shit, it is you! Clarity! Huh? Hmm? Oh my god, Jason! I haven't seen you in ages! You'd think two people who live in a small town would run into each other more. Right? Of course. I do work hard to not leave my house. Ah, I think I found the issue. Sit down. Well, I'm waiting for other people from this writing group to show up, though. Oh, you're here for that, too? Crazy! You, too? I decided to get that book I can feel inside me out onto the page. This group has been very helpful in keeping me motivated. Epic. Wait, this isn't one of your books on classical studies in modern society, is it? <laughs> I see you've read my work. <laughs> I remember reading the beginning manuscript. You gave me some insightful notes. I tried, but I was out of my depth. <laughs> it was valuable perspective. I don't want to just talk to my professor crowd, I want to reach everyone. I'm glad to see you here. We kind of lost touch after, uh, you know. Yeah, I asked you for a coffee a few times, but, uh, I figured you weren't feeling sociable. Oh, can I apologize now for being a jackass then? Hey, you don't have to do anything you don't want to. I didn't take it seriously. You were going through a lot. It was a rough year. I dropped out of our old group. By the time I had that headspace to be around people and write again, poof, the group was gone. I like being around writers, but once I'm on a roll, I don't want to sit around, I want to write. I dropped out. My bad. Writing group is where writers actually sit around and talk about writing. Not really conducive to actual writing. I can do that at home and not pay five fifty for a latte. Can't argue there, but we all need a little camaraderie and inspiration. That's why we seek each other out. True. That's why I came tonight. I'm hoping to get a little spark. <laughs> 
a little something something. Well, what's the project? I'm still trying to figure it out. I want to branch out, write something very different from my usual. You do a lot of sci-fi, if I recall correctly. The genre is my thing. Sci-fi, horror, small indie features. This time, I'm going more mainstream. So, what? Good question. Blank. I'm switching things up to change that blank into a... something. Not even a hint of an idea. That's tough. When was the last time you watched a ton of movies or a lot of TV that wasn't sci-fi or horror? Hmm. I don't know. Here's a trick I use when I'm searching for new ways to introduce concepts to students. I delve into a new hobby. Bread baking, tap dancing, you name it. I watch a lot of how-tos, I read articles, just immerse myself in learning. I figure out which one made me connect the most to the subject, then I find a way to do the same thing. But civic virtue and government. A total learning bomb, you say? Nearly obsessive. I've been sitting there in a darkened room, glaring at my computer screen. Hmm. That could work. Who better to take learning advice from than a professor? Thanks, Teach. This is why they pay me the mediocre bucks. Oh, hey, there's the rest of the group. Let me introduce you. Hey, guys, over here. This newbie is an old friend of mine. Clarity Sims, screenwriter. Meet The Order. We wanted a cool name, but... That's what we could come up with. Hi, everyone. Uh, glad to meet you all. Okay, time to do a little studying. I swear to God, one of you programs better give me an idea or I'm tossing this TV out the window. Nordic Noir? Hmm. No, I feel cold every time I watch one of those. I don't want to wear a sweater the entire time I write it. It's so monochromatic. How are so many people committing murder up there? Is it the snow? The lutefisk? Hard-bitten, gritty detective story. Am I gritty? As a person? The worst crime I've ever committed was stealing some grapes when I was a kid because I was hungry. Ugh. Ain't nobody gonna watch urban grape thief mysteries. Maybe if I read the police blotter for a few days. Maybe if I knew some cops. This might require talking to people, including cops. Pass. Ugh, Clarity, you are not going to adapt some Korean horror sci-fi. We said good, clean, uplifting, normal stuff. Move it. Oh, this might work. Mom loves this stuff. I mean, people love this stuff. And it's so easy. Throw together some reasonably good-looking, mild-mannered people. A little light conflict that in real life wouldn't last three minutes of a simple discussion and... Bingo! You've got a movie! She watches hours of these on that kitschy channel. Yeah. Yeah, this could work. <laughs> oh, maybe it's not my style of movie, but what? I watch a couple, take some notes, a little outline. I could be pitching with Lenny in two months. Why didn't I think of this sooner? <laughs> this is gonna be great! You've been listening to Fast Track to 40, written and directed by Georgia McKenzie, produced by Camille Johnson, executive produced by Inia Fong, starring Katie Ritz as Penny Eisenstein, Heather Summers as Janet Jackson, Tony Jackson as Dan Owens and Rod, Joshua Sterling as Jason Stevens, and other voices by the cast. Music composed by John Ruder. Sound design and editing by Alexa Ruvalcaba and recorded at Shane Salk Productions in Hollywood. Like and subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss the next episode, or visit us at oralstories.com. Check out Bonnie Screws Up and Upper River, other podcasts from Oral Stories.